All right, we're going to pray. Let's open in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for another Tuesday night, Reformers Unanimous Bible Study. We're still getting our way through the book of Genesis, and Lord, we just want to just say thank you for this book. It is, it is just so deep. I uh, pray, Father, that you would just take control. Holy Spirit of God, we invite you to come and help us uh, bring things to memory and, and just put it out there uh, so that people can get it. And uh, Lord, we do love you a lot. We know that you love us. If there's any here who's not saved, we pray you draw them closer to you. And if maybe there's somebody there out who, uh, who needs to just know some things about forgiveness, this is a good chapter for it. Mm. We love you a lot, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. This one here is 20 verses long. 20? 20 verses. Which one are we in? This is Genesis chapter 33, and it is 20 verses long, and honest to goodness, the idea of trying to get an hour out of this was daunting at first. Oh, really? At Because at, it's only 20 verses. We could end in like half an hour. No, we're not going to do oh, it. Okay. People have come to expect more from us, so we're going to dig deeper. They've come to expect... <laughs> They've come to expect more if, from us. If you're not, if you're not absolutely exhausted by the time we're done with this, oh, yeah. then we haven't done our job. I am, and I we, drink coffee. We, we have to give you so many facts, factoids, even facts that don't exist in the Bible. We will, we'll try to give you some of those too. You're gonna do extra biblical facts. That's right. All right, this, I'm gonna read the whole chapter. That is not level. I, it's. It's so bugging me. It's fine. You carry on and I'll carry over. <coughs> Everyone prepare to be seasick please, a little. Please pause. It's, no, no, no. No pause. No, I'm watching the screen over here because you're looking at that. Here, do your thing and I'm going to let you know when it's level on your computer. This is a Denison production. It's still unlevel. It takes 30 seconds. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's going to go... It's going to go... All right. Chapter 33. We're going to read the whole thing. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. I always think of that when he says he lifted up his eyes. It is going to be one of those days. I've had a really rough week. <laughs> what happened to everything? It's there. All right. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold... Esau came, and with him four hundred men. And he divided the children unto Leah, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over before them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Hmm. And Esau ran to meet him. And embraced him, mm -hmm. and fell on his neck, and kissed him, mm -hmm. and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes, talking about Esau this time, and saw the women and children, and said, Who are those with thee? <laughs> and he said, The children which God hath graciously given thy servant. And then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near, and bowed themselves, and after came Joseph near, and Rachel. And they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? Hmm. And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at thy hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I had seen the face of God, and thou wast pleased with me. Such a good stuff. That's good stuff. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. And he said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before thee. Whew. And he said unto him, my Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks and herds with young are with me. And if men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Yep. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lead on softly, according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure, until I come to my Lord unto Seir. And Esau said, 
let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, What needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way unto Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth, and built him a house, and made booths for his cattle. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padanaram, and pitched his tent before the city. And he bought a parcel of a field, where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of silver. And he erected there an altar, and called it El Elohi Israel. I didn't know if you were going to make it. <laughs> There's some good things in the Bible. I was like, oh, what. we're going to lose it. All right. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 28, God says that, uh, that the way to learn things is line upon line, precept upon precept, yeah. line upon line. Yeah. And in the book of, uh, that's Isaiah 28, and then also in Isaiah verse 40, uh, chapter 47, and we should look at that one, Isaiah 47, da, 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 da. and I'm going to look at verse, I'm going to look at, um, I got lost already. Spit it out. Yeah, I got lost already. So, uh, like I said, Ezekiel 47. Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fooled you. And uh, verse 30, verse something. You read it. I have no idea. <laughs> wow. All right. He works on these for hours. <laughs> verse chapter 47 uh, in verse, mm, verse two. Verse 1, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Then brought me he out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward and behold there ran out waters on the right side and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters now here's where I want to get the waters were to the ankles yes again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to the knees and again he measured a thousand and brought me through and the waters were to the loins and afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the river waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. There are a lot of folks that can that compare the Bible to that river. And you'll see my little guy here, he's starting off, and he's in the waters at his ankles. And that's the historical books. Have you ever noticed that, like, it's a lot easier to understand Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John than it is to understand the book of Revelation? Oh, well, yeah. A lot easier to understand the book of Genesis and Exodus, even Leviticus, than it is to understand the major prophets and the minor prophets. Because the Old Testament and the New Testament both start shallow, and then by the time they get to the end, they're really deep. Spiritual stuff. Deep spiritual stuff, a lot of deep truths. We're in here. Yeah. Uh, so we're in a lot of the good stories. I like good stories. A lot of the good stories. And so at times... Um, it's not like it's going to be, ooh, deep, amazing, wonderful, spiritual truth, um, like you're going to find in the major prophets and minor prophets where nobody really understands what he's talking about. This is stuff that we, this is stuff that we all get. So I've titled this chapter. I totally agree. The Prodigal Brothers. I totally agree. <laughs> because, because like the story of the prodigal son in the New Testament, these these folks have, have come back together and they found forgiveness uh, Jacob and Esau are reunited and lots of forgiveness and lots of weepiness and everything okay now right absolutely I thought the same thing whenever we got to that one verse and yeah you, and I started crying and then you started crying and yeah so if you'll remember going back to Genesis chapter 32 
It's going to be one of those. Yeah, it is. It's going to be all over the place. Chapters, actually, it's Genesis chapter 31. Um, Jacob had left Laban. Yes. He left Padanaram. Yep. And Laban had chased after Jacob. Yep. And he brought his brethren with him because they was going to put a hurt on Jacob. And then God suffered him not. And God suffered him not. So, so now he's he's coming down into this area, and Esau has or Esau is coming up with four hundred men. Woohoo! And we would always say, out of the frying pan and into the fire, fire. into the fire, fire. But I learned in Sunday school that with God, it's like this: oh. You're out of the frying pan and onto the counter. <laughs> Do you like my Do you like my green stuff? That's uh, you know that's very nineteen fifties color. I scheme. did that on purpose. Yeah. So out of the frying pan and onto the counter. A lot of what time, does that mean? What that means is, just when you think it's going to be bad, it's going to it's bad now, and it's going to get worse. You end up in a safe place because God rescues you. Oh, please, Lord Jesus! I know I do. Please, I knew you would do that. Oh. All right. I'm taking. I'm literally. Taking every verse as, ooh, is that the one? Is that the one? Is that the one? God is is encouraging him. Let's start in verse 1, and we're going to read down uh, down through like verse 4. It says, And Jacob lifted up his eyes. And. Okay. Um, It just means he looked up. Because he was watching the ground when he was walking, right? Right. Why was he watching the ground? So he didn't fall in the sand. Because why? Because he's an old man. And. He's now limping. He's now limping. Oh, I know this one. Yes. So there's. So this is the first time we see this phrase. Jacob lifted up his eyes. He's. He is. He's in pain. He just wrestled the angel the night before. And he's unsteady. He's got to learn to walk on a. I don't. We don't know if he's got a stick. Probably he's got a stick with him or whatever. But he's. Man. He's a mess. He's a mess. He's been up all night. He's tired, and he's. He's limping. Yeah. Walking with the fam. Right, well, or probably catching up to the fam because they're ahead of him. He'd put, he'd sent them across first, and it's a good thing that it's full of little kids and baby sheep, or he'd have never caught them. That's <laughs> right. That's right. We Karen, where's I, Jacob? We saw him a week ago. We went to the woods the other day, and it's so cute. To, um, I can't, I can't go very fast, and I take a lot of stops. And everyone's so nice because they'll stop and look at flowers. And yes. I know what they're doing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so it says he lifted up his eyes from yeah. his limping. Yes. And he looked. Yes. And behold. You see that? Uh, and behold. He's, he's like seeing. He lifted up his eyes. And went, oh my. He looked. He behold. <laughs> Behold's like that. The light clicked on. Yes. <laughs> that's what it is. He lifts up his eyes. He's oh, just it's a beautiful there. desert. Yeah. Oh, what's he that? He looks around and boom. I always, boom. I always picture, you know how like on the cowboy and Indian scenes where they, they look up their eyes and the Indians are all along all the ridges? That's what I picture. And then their eyes go, Bree! that's yeah. what I picture here. <laughs> and behold, Esau came and with him 400 men. Oh, boy. Now, Jacob had the promise of victory when he beat Prevailed, I'll say when he prevailed. when he prevailed against the angel yes. Jesus in the last chapter because he yes. says I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Yes, and that word was the same word as deliver me, O yes. God, from my brother. And it's like not Saul or something like that. All right, so he so he's still planning just in case, okay, or maybe maybe because it says he divided. It doesn't say. It, I just don't get the fear out of it. Before, when he divided the company into two camps, he said, lest they destroy this case. one, right. these ones will survive. Right. Here, I don't I don't really get the fear out of him. It's like he sees him, he's coming with 400 men, and he still takes the time to divide things up. But look, it says he divided the children unto Leah. So Leah's got her, uh, mm-hmm. her six. Uh, and Rachel, uh, she's got her two. One. Oh, that's right, one at this point. And under the two handmaids, and they got two apiece. Mm-hmm. And he put the handmaids and their children in the front, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph in the back, hindermost. And then you'd expect the next verse to say, and he passed over behind them. Because that's what he did before. He sent them all ahead, and he oh, stayed back. And he passed over before them. But he didn't. He Now he moves to the front. 
And you can see the change in character and the amount of faith that Jacob has. He's wrestled with God. He's, yeah, I know, isn't that powerful? Before him. He went on before them. Wow. So you see a change in, in Jacob's character and a change in his faith in God. And and it says, you just got to picture this. He's, he is, he's walking in front of him now. And he bows himself to the ground seven times. That took all day. Because he has to get back up again. Have you ever tried to bow with a dislocated hip? <laughs> To the ground. To the ground. He bows himself to the ground. It's not the bowing down the kitchen. He's the getting <laughs> back, back up, up again. Again. <laughs> you, again, I grab my cane. And I do the himself hand. Up. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Or he's grabbing one no, of the servants. I'm sure. I, yeah. I think he's just. And and it was a sight to behold for gonna, poor Esau. It's a spectacle. He's it's watching a, his brother fall down and struggle to get back up. Yeah. Seven times. Yeah. He's. He's literally, yeah, and it says until he came to it's his It's beyond mother, humbling, it's, is what it is. It's it's tragically humbling. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a humiliation. It, yes. It's, 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 Jacob has just experienced this lowering and lowering and, and lowering. And it just doesn't matter anymore. And Esau ran to meet him. And I see the two brothers in just this juxtaposition, the 97-year-old brother limping and falling down and limping and falling down, the 111-year-old brother Esau running to him. Wait a minute. And Esau ran to meet him. Yeah. You said 97 and 111. 111. They're both 111. Aren't they twins? Didn't they come out at the same time? Oh, yeah, time? yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> I'm like, they're twin. That's a long fraternal. Yeah. I was switching back to... Um, yeah, you were. Yeah, I was. All right. The twin bond is still there, and yeah. he sees him coming. Okay, so this is this is my thing about this. You know, we're going to get to the point where he gives away $250,000 worth of gifts to Esau. I don't think any of it was necessary. What was necessary for was for God to do this work. Yeah, that's it was. Right. It was what God did that changed Esau's heart. Not a single lamb changed his heart. That's it was right. seeing his brother fall down seven times and then limp the rest of the way over. And then Esau did what Jacob couldn't do. He ran to him. Yeah, because Jacob would have. He would have. It's so good. <laughs> Prodigal brothers. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And that's the prodigal son all story. Oh, yeah. And then Jacob said, I am no longer fit to be called your brother, but make me a servant. That's right. He does. And he said, bring forth the fatted calf yeah. and put a ring on him and a ring. Uh, and it says, and they wept. Now, yeah. I thought um, it was a good weeping, too. It was I, a healing weeping. Yeah. It was a long time weeping. The... Um, um, and I wrote this down. No, no, don't worry about this. We're going. To... Oh, I'm not. Esau runs to lay down his hatred. Oh, that's good. Jacob embraces forgiveness and acceptance. That's true. Jacob loses his fear of his brother. Mm -hmm. You know, he had to sit up there watching the sheep at night in Padanaram, wondering if one of these days he wasn't going to see Esau come around the hill. Because the uh, he was he hunt him down, hunt especially him down. in the early years. Especially in the early years, you yeah. know, when everything was still really fresh and painful. Yeah. Ooh. And I wrote down: so Jacob loses his fear. Esau gains nephews, sisters, and a niece, and they probably both sleep a lot better. <laughs> That's what I wrote down. Now it says, and he and and he lifted up his eyes. And uh, again, this is Esau. This is Esau lifting up his eyes. Now, why did he lift up his eyes? This is our first word thing of the day. Dun, 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 dun. What do we got? Baca. Oh, baca. 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 So the so the word baca uh, looks like this in the Hebrew. You always read this way. In the old Hebrew, back whenever it was still pictures, uh, it was a, a tent. A uh, smiling and, mustache. A hand. And hey, hey, <laughs> which just means like the. It's a very. It's just makes it an, like a noun. So, 
so we've got hand and tent. And the idea of tent was that it was inside. Yeah. It was the inside of his hand because it's palms placed on the eyes while crying. The, the idea of weeping is, is this. It's, oh, I'm familiar. Yeah, <laughs> you're familiar. And so, so, so here they are, just praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. It says, my brother, praise God. And it says, and Esau lift up his eyes. Because they were all blurry and oh. they hadn't invented Kleenex yet. <laughs> and he saw the women and children. It's almost like he he didn't see him the first time. No, all he saw all was he his saw brother. was his brother. All he saw was the the limping man. Yeah, and I'm sure at first he thought to himself, "Who? What? What's happening? Who is this? Yeah, what is going on? Yeah, because he sent forth those droves and everything. Is he sending forth the servant with the bum leg? What's he Who knows? doing? Who knows? It took him a while to recognize him. He had to get up close. I mean, yeah. seven times he's fallen down. He finally gets close and recognizes him. And uh, and Esau says, "Who?" Who are those with thee? You gotta remember, they haven't seen each other for twenty years. Yeah, twenty years. Twenty years. And you know, back whenever they knew each other, neither Esau had gotten married. Yeah. All right. He had two wives, three wives, three, three wives. He was three. going off after number four. And uh, and and Jacob was kind of like the perpetual bachelor, and you always wonder like, when's he gonna get married? When's he gonna get married? Yeah. Nobody wants him. All he does now is he, trickle day. Now he looks up. And <laughs> hey, you went from a smooth man to a man of the field. Yeah, <laughs> working out there. You're yeah. smelling like sheep now. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Good job, brother. <laughs> and it, so he's but just, he's got stories. Oh my gosh, the story it, swapping sh- must have been great. Who are those with thee? And he said, the children which God hath graciously given thy servant. Now, there's a part of me that thinks, is Jacob saying that word, thy servant, because he's being conniving? Yeah. Or is this just the honest outflowing of a broken heart? Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah. I think that when we started in chapter 32, when he said, Thus shall you say unto my Lord Esau, thy servant Jacob, said, that was conniving. And he was he was trying to use his wisdom. He was trying to say, "See, no, no, you're okay. I'm low. You're high." But then, when the angel met him and they wrestled all night, uh, all the pretense fell away. I agree. And uh, and he says, "Which God hath graciously given unto thy servant." Um, now we're going to stop here at the word graciously. In verse five, we have the ver- word graciously. Always have a colored pencil handy. Graciously. Hmm. Uh, verse eight, and he said, "These are to find grace hmm. in my in thy sight." Verse ten, if now I have found grace in hmm. thy sight. Verse eleven, hmm. because God hath dealt graciously with me. Hmm. Verse fifteen, what needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. No, no, no. The mm is coming in a minute. That's still neat, though. It is super cool. This book, this chapter has a flavor all its own. They all do. And because I, every single one I have the the biggest thing for me to teach one of these is I have to I have to sit there and go, "Okay, God, what's the deal with this one? What is the deal with it because it's completely different from the previous yeah. one. This one is the prodigal son. It's about grace. Mm-hmm. It's about coming home. Yes, it finding is. Finding favor. It's it it is it is being rescued out of the frying pan onto the counter. So let's talk about the word grace, shall we? Okay. In order to talk about the word grace, you'll remember back in chapter 32, verse 1, and Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. Yes. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's machana. Yeah, camp. Camp, host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim, or Manim. All right, and we said that the word camp is this word. Yeah. It's just like this. You can see the tent. <laughs> tent, tent. Okay. This is this is in the letter N in the early Hebrew. This is the letter H. The letter I got it backward. H and N. So I'm looking through the paper. So this is this is the N. This is the H because you read it backwards. This is a seed, and it means to continue as seeds do. And this is a tent. You can see the tent doors. 
Okay, it's a wall of a tent specifically. Yes. And so we said that the word camp referred to a continuing of walls because the tents were side by side by side by side. So continuing walls equals camp. And if you look at a camp, that's kind of what it looks like, a bunch of walls. Yeah, especially because they've got them all lined up in straight oh, rows yeah. or whatever. And then we said, now that's the word, that was the word uh, host. This is, um, this is the word host. That was camp. Now we're going to build on the word camp, and we're going to come into the word host. Host. Mahanaim. Okay? And it goes this way. We're adding a letter, the letter M, which is the picture of water because we're traveling. So a traveling group of continuing walls is a host. Absolutely. Bunch of tents. Bunch of tents. Bunch of tents moving down the road. That's, a, that's clearly associated with a with host. <clears throat> so, let me do this. I feel like I'm learning Hebrew. I know. This, I is a, this is so cool. This is the word for graciously. It's almost like um, a camp. It's almost like a camp. It's actually is the, the, the root is the word camp because we have the little seed that continues and the wall that continues. And it's actually pronounced Hanam, Hanan, I guess, Hanan. And it means graciously. The actual translation of this word is beauty, as in the beauty of a camp. It's all laid out oh, nice and neat, right? Neat. All right. Now, this is, this is where the crying part comes in. Because you actually have two things here. Yes. You have the continuing walls of a tent, and then you also have the continuing. Yes. Of it's, the it, continuing. It's a camp that continues. Of the walls. Yes. Because do you know what happens whenever you offend your brother? He tears down all your walls. You don't live in the same tent anymore. Oh. But whenever you make up with your brother... You continue to continue in the same walls. That's cool. So grace is to continue to continue walls with somebody. So like right now... Or to I, continue camping. I didn't kick you out of the camp when I should have. That's right. That is what, that's what the word grace is, is to continue in the same... I'm going to let you live with me. I'm going to let you live with me. Kara tells me that all the time. I thought that was really cool that because, is super cool. because it's the ab idea that grace is the idea that you're still part of the family. We don't kick you out. That's right. Grace is to say we still bump into each other around camp, you know, and and I, it's just it's That's, sweet. Yeah, it sure it's is. sweet. So if so, you've ever gone camping, you know what it's like. So the theme of this chapter is grace. Clearly, there's the verses. Clearly, Psalm one thirty three one. Yes. They're going to like that. Okay. Oh, I'm right there. I know. That was a pretty good flip if I do say so myself. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. For brethren to, to dwell together in unity. Amen. That's good stuff. So that's good and it's, and it's pleasant. <sighs> so good. So good. All right. So he says, these are the, uh, the children which God hath graciously given to thy servant. And that's whenever Esau realizes he's an uncle. Then the handmaidens came near. So you got Bilhah and Zilpah. They came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. Yeah. Um, the kids are, Reuben is probably about 13. He was born at the, he's about 13. And the youngest one is about seven years old younger than him so six. joseph is about six and it would have been so cute all the little daycare kids oh my it's just, just adorable and they're all coming in with their great big sweeping bows to uncle esau i know because you know they were trained and they oh were yeah just, you know used to you still run into people just adorable oh my goodness just adorable so they, they knew how to behave then the handmaids came near and they bowed and leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves and, and after came Joseph, Nir, and Rachel, <coughs> and they bowed themselves. And, he's, and Esau, Esau's got to know. He says, what meanest this? What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? That was back uh, in last chapter in verse uh, 13, 14, and 15, whenever Jacob was sending some sheep 
some more sheep, some goats, some more goats, <laughs> some camels. Some with spaces in between. With spaces. Some cows, some bulls, some asses, and their foals. And he, Just everything. What are you talking about this? And what's neat is that, uh, and this is... This is how you you get the idea that Jacob has really been humbled because he doesn't even try to to lie about it. He said, "These are to find grace. These are to find grace." Which is cute because he's trying to buy it. He's trying to don't buy grace. Mm-hmm. He was. I know he, what he's saying. Yeah, he. You know, he started that way. That was before he started them. He sent them out before he met the angel. I don't think he's okay. I'll take it back. I don't think he's really trying to. To, to buy grace. I think he's trying to soften Esau's heart so that he can have grace. Yeah, absolutely. Please find it in your heart to forgive me and here's some stuff to make that easier. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it often does. <clears throat> Money answereth all things, <laughs> according to the book of Proverbs. Yeah, I just read that. All right. This is, a, this is another thing. This is so good. Verse 9? Mm, verse 9. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. First off, let's just talk about the word my brother. Jacob's over there, my servant, thy servant, thy servant, my lord, my lord, my lord. Esau cuts through it all. Cuts through it all, my brother. He says, I have enough, my brother. That's he, awesome. <laughs> so, that's that's fantastic. And, and again, that's very much prodigal, right? So he was going to go to the prodigals. He was going to go home and say to his, to his yeah. father, I am no more fit to be called thy son make me as one of thy servants, and he never even got it out because his dad declared his sonship again. If you don't know what the prodigal son story is, it's in Luke chapter 15. You can read that later. It's good stuff. Good stuff. So Esau says, I have enough, my brother. Let me read down here a little bit. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. And thou was pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. And he said, this is Esau, and Esau said, Let us take our journey. Let us go, and I will go before thee. Because he knows what's doing. He knows that he's coming home. He knows he's coming He's home. not coming for a visit. Yeah. He gets it. So he's been gone a long time. But I like the fact again, Esau jumps right into the brother mode. Yep. He jumps right into us. Yep. He jumps right into us. Us our So let's talk about verse nine. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Enough is enough. Or is it? What? Yeah, I know. So every once in a while, whenever I'm doing the research for these things. Um, I'll grab a word that seems like it's important in a verse, and I'll go, hmm, let's dig into that one a little bit. Hmm. This is powerful, good stuff, Maynard. Hmm. This is Esau's enough. The word, and I'm, I don't even write out the Hebrew stuff because nobody here reads Hebrew, but this is in the early stuff. You see the tent, and you see the head. I see a head and a tent. The head of the tent. I see the head in the tent. Okay, think about that for a minute. Esau, head of the tent. I'm contented. No. <laughs> think about it. 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 Contented. That would be head tented. I'm head <laughs> So when Esau and Jacob first last saw each other, <laughs> Jacob was stealing the birthright, which made Jacob the head of the tent. tent. Whenever... Isaac dies, the son who has the birthright gains the authority of the All tent, family. Of the family. Mm-hmm. He becomes the headship. Mm-hmm. It's the family headship. And it's interesting because um, Esau lost the head of the tent ship. But he says, I have enough. And the word enough here, which is also translated as much, many, great, or abundant, is written like this. It is the one who is abundant through authority. He's the head of stuff. He's been the head of stuff for 20 years now. So so Esau leaves mama and dada, 
daddy, and he runs away, right? Yes, he he goes east into the land of Edom. He's going to get himself a wife. Jacob's left and gone north to get a wife and to flee from, free, flee from Esau. And here's what I thought to myself. What kind of a guy is Esau at this point in life? You know, he's complicated um, because early on, I mean, he earned that whole section in Hebrews where, you know, he was bitter and sodded okay. carefully with tears. Right. And he seems, at least where I sit, to have recovered. No, his... no, no. Not, not verse 33. Let's go back a few chapters. Okay. Whenever he runs away from mom and dad, he goes into, into the east. What's Esau like there? I'm thinking he's got an anger streak. Yes, yes. He, he's a hunter, so he's 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 used to killing things. He's patient. He's patient, right? Yeah. He's he's uh he. I think he's more. I think he's, he's more pictured by his anger than much. Right, right. Pictured by his anger, but also, he's also he's also very. He's he's very. Um, remember, he wasn't loved. Right. You know, they loved they loved the other one. Well, because of, you know, except for his, his daddy venison. loves his daddy loves his venison because of his venison. because of his venison. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's just he was a mixed up kid. Whenever he left, here's what I'm here's what I think. Okay, Esau runs off. Now, the one thing that we know about Esau, this is the lesson I think that Esau learned. He comes in one day. He's super hungry. Jake and he says, "Hey, give me some of that soup you're making." And Jacob says, "I will if you'll give me the blessing." And he says, fine, whatever. And he gives it to him. <laughs> All right? The, the, he gives him the birthright. Yes. And then at the end, when the blessing is being doled out, okay, uh, he, he loses that too. And so I'm thinking that it, when I picture Esau, I picture, I picture a hunter. I picture a very straightforward, simple kind of guy. No the nonsense. Kind, no nonsense. Those guys, a lot of times, they don't have forward thinking skills. They live in the moment. He does. But, but I think that Esau may have learned not to be so, so short-sighted because he, he got his gut kicked in by his brother. So now you've got an angry hunter, straightforward, who has some long-term uh, thinking skills, and poof! Wherever he goes, he rises in authority. They make him the manager. They make him the manager. Next thing you know, he owns the part com part owner of the company. And and besides that, God's blessing him because God wants to bless Esau so that Esau doesn't attack Jacob later. But I just see that Esau has that character that rises to the top. Yeah. He's you know he's also he has if you take go back to the beginning whenever he didn't value things that were important mm -hmm. and i think he's learned that lesson now he places the value on the things that he should be valuing absolutely there are so many people mm. in america who don't we you know facebook sometimes will have that little meme that says um use things <coughs> and love people instead of loving things and using people mm. and i think early Very on good. esau was the kind of guy who maybe used people? I don't know. The same thing as Jacob, but it's just a little bit different twist on how they presented that to the world. But he didn't value the things that were valuable, and now I think he does. I think, I think he, he does. I think he values family. Yeah, I, in I, a different way than he used to. I think he rose to the top of the tent. He rose to the top of the tent. He saws enough is the head of the tent. Yes, he says, "I have much. I have many. I'm a. I'm blessed. I'm abundant. I still think he's contented." I'm a. Verse two, verse ten. He is content. I, yeah. And Jacob said, "Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at thy hand. For therefore I have seen thy face, as though I have seen the face of God. Yes, and thou was pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me. Listen, and because." I have enough. This is Jacob's enough. The shepherd's staff yes. with the joining tent peg yes. and the little hand guy. The staff in the hand, okay, was whenever you take hold of something, like I take hold of this cup. Yes. It's a reference to a container for holding contents, and this word here means full. When I take the joining thing and I join the hand to the staff, it means all, the whole, totality, everything. 
So, so Esau says, I got it all. Esau says, <clears throat> I have abundance. And Jacob walks in, he says, take it. I have everything. I have, I have literally have everything. And, and the thought I put down was that I, Esau looked at what he had in his hand, but Jacob realized he was in the hand of God. Yeah, right. It's a spiritual application. It's a spiritual application. Jacob realized that no matter what happens, he's, he's rich. He's rich. He, he is rich. He just wrestled God. Yeah. <laughs> and got the blessing. And got the and blessing. got a name change. He's rich. In the whole, this is the kind of faith that says, silver and gold have I none, but such that I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. When Peter says that in the book of Acts. This is the kind of faith that doesn't look at what you have in your hand. Esau says, I have enough. And he looked at what he had in his hand, and he looked at his bank account, and he goes, no, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm fine. I'm, you know, I'm, and Jacob's like, I have the God who owns everything. And he's taking care of me. I have everything. I have the totality. Mm-hmm. Wow. There's nothing that I lack. There's nothing. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I yeah. shall not want. He that spared not his own son, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Wow. That's where Jacob is at. Jacob mm-hmm. is on a di- completely different level at this point. Yeah, he's beyond He's beyond contented. Yeah, yeah. When he got knocked down a few pegs, his spiritual awareness of God went up, 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 up through the, through the roof. It's just amazing. Um, That's a good way of saying it. Well, you, you show that one. Should I show that one? Why yeah. would I say that out loud? I know, but I think it's a good way. To, I'm visual. All right. Esau knew he had much in his hand. Jacob knew that he was in the hand of God. Totally different. Totally different viewpoint. So yeah. those, those two enoughs are really amazing. You could take everything away from Jacob. He'd still have it all. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> God's there. That's got his little house statue pouring oil on it always Pour grieves oil. me because there's that one um when elijah go i think it was elijah goes into the to the lady's house and he says what have you here and she says i have a i have a little tiny bit of meal in the bottom of a barrel or or no i have a, i have a cruise of oil yeah. she's that one i have a cruise of oil and god and god <laughs> and god don't forget that you have god she hadn't learned a lesson yet. she hadn't learned it all right verse 10 again and Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. Interesting thing about customs at this point, you would not take a present from an enemy. You would go, no, I don't. It's like, like whenever I somebody... want to do that now. It's like whenever somebody wants to shake your hand, and if they're your yeah, enemy, you don't shake their hand. Spit on their foot. So he says, if, 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 we're, if we're back to being buds, <laughs> take my present. Okay. And he says, It's a really big present. <laughs> Only a quarter of a million dollar present. And he says, Now watch this. I love this. For therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God, and thou was pleased with me. It's just like yesterday. <laughs> when I saw the face of God for real. Yes. And I put that down. I said, When you've seen the face of God, you see God in every face. That is the truth. That is why when you get saved, you love people because you see God in them. You see Jesus. You become aware of this, oh my goodness, God is everywhere. And That's 1 John 5, 1. He that beloveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Say that again. 1 John 5, 1. He that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Once you've seen the face of God... You see the face of God everywhere. Yeah, that's why it, whenever we love God, it's easy to love our neighbor because our neighbor's made in the image of God. Mm. <clears throat> All right, let me go down here. I already did uh, this one here. The let's see. Take I pray thee my blessing that is brought to thee because God hath dealt graciously with me mm-hmm. and because I have enough and He urged him and He, and he took it, mm-hmm. which was the right thing to do. Verse I have 12. everything. And he said, let us take our journey and let us go and I will go before thee. Now at this point, Esau is like, my brother has come home. Come back to Seir with me. Come back to the land of Edom and I'm going to introduce you to my wives, my children. We'll go through everything. Don't worry about anything. I'm going to come back. And, And Jacob says, he said unto him, my Lord. He's so practical. Knoweth that my Lord knoweth that the children are tender. 
they're still young, and the flocks and herds with young are with me. And if men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lead on softly, according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure until I come to my Lord unto Seir. Now I thought was really sweet was this. Jacob looks at this group of people and he says, he says, um, I will lead on softly according as the cattle that goeth before me. So he's got his cattle in front of him. He's a shepherd, you know, kind of push him a little bit, whatever. I, and, and he says that he'll go on before them. And I love verse 12 with Esau. And he's, he's going to let the lamb set the pace. And Esau, Amen. <laughs> and Esau said, let us take our journey and let us go and I will go before thee. Jacob is, you know, Esau's like once he's he was going to mm-hmm. he was going to shepherd the whole family back to Seir. I he's just, got 400 guys protecting oh, him, watching yeah. out for him. I just think it's it's so sweet. It Everything about sweet. it is so sweet. Yeah, these these are two great verses. Yeah. Um verse 14, uh, talk about Seir. Uh, I wrote down that Esau had gone east. Listen, this is so cool. Isaac and Rebekah, right? Rebekah says, go in and lie to dad and steal the birthright or the blessing at the okay. end. Okay. All right, I'll do that. And then Jacob flees north and Esau goes east and and neither one of them ever went back home. And Rebekah and Isaac lost their their children. I mean, they're like 90 years old, but they, they left home. And there's no indication that Esau ever went back home. There's no indication that Jacob ever went back home. Um, and I just, I just, I don't know. I thought that was really crazy. So, but Jacob never does go to Seir. He says, <laughs> he says, until I come unto my Lord unto Seir. Uh, just cross, cross that out because uh, that was good intentions on his part. I had to ask myself again, is he lying on purpose? I think his intention, I think he was so caught up in the moment. He was like, I'm going to go with you. And I'll show you why, because... We're going to have like a large chunk of time come up here in a minute. And 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 I think he just gets back on track and goes into the promised land where he's supposed to be. Yeah. But at this point, he's just like, yeah, yeah, you guys go on ahead. We'll catch up. And and then and then things slow down. Verse 15, it says, <laughs> And Esau said, Let me now leave with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, What needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. I don't need a babysitter? I I don't know. I have no idea. I, th- I think I know some people, you know, make it, you know, they're armed guys, and I don't need an armed escort, and mm-hmm. but I don't know. What I mean? think it's just, you know, hey, we're I'm okay. We're okay. You're okay. I got God on my side anyway. Jacob's like, <laughs> God's already got my back. I'm fine. Yeah. All right. So, verse sixteen. Now. Verse 16, all right. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called <coughs> Succoth. Where's Succoth? And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, <coughs> which is in the land of Canaan. So here's one of my maps. Um, they had left Beersheba. Esau had gone to Edom, to Mount Seir. And all this area in red is the land of the Edomites. Edom <coughs> is Esau. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob had gone north to Padan Aram, mm-hmm. spent 20 years there getting some wives and some children, a bunch of stuff. Comes back down here. Mm-hmm. At Maenaim is uh, where he saw the angel hosts. Mm-hmm. Peniel is where he wrestled with God. Mm-hmm. And it says that he that he crossed over and then he's, he's Succoth. I think Succoth is probably on the southern part of this river, not on the northern part. But he's got Succoth. And then he's going to cross over and he's going to go to Shechem. Now, the word Succoth means booths. Yes, it does. So Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Now, before we go any further... (coughs) What's a booth? A booth is like a stall for his animals. Okay. This is for the bigger animals. Uh, Sure. I don't know. 
No, I, I don't know either. It says he built stalls for his animals. Okay. All right. And he built himself a house because that's what you do when you're 97 years old and you've got a couple of kids. And you're on your way to see her. And <laughs> so he's he's like, I made it into the promised land. I'm done. <laughs> I cropped up in the So here at chapter 33, the twins are 97 years old. And when we get to chapter 35, they're 120. 23 years are going to pass. Ooh. Right. And so when it says that he journeyed to Succoth and he built him a house, he built him a house. And they, they stayed a while. And he built some stalls for his animals. Of which he had many. Of which he had many, many, many. So that brings me to this question. Trees, trees in ancient Israel. In ancient times, the land of Israel was heavily forested. Isn't that cool? What a great idea. Picture the land of Israel. Looking like Ohio. Looking like Ohio. It's weird. Can't get it in my head. It doesn't look right because there should be sand and dirt and camels everywhere. Do you, do you remember whenever Jacob... They're driving a, camels through the woodlands of Ohio. That's right. Going it's from weird. meadows to meadows. It's weird. It's, it's so weird. But that's the way it was. That's the way it was. That's the way it's going to be. And yeah, That's right. Okay. So so you got to get the whole deserty thing... Out of your head. Kind of out of your brain. Oh, man. Yeah, it's really strange. See there? I can see people thinking. They suffered climate change. So when Jacob was up with Laban, remember he was peeling sticks to stick it with his boss? Yeah, there was birch trees. and He had a poplar. He had the almond tree. He had chestnut tree. We're going to see oak trees here in a little bit. Yeah. So listen there. This is the coolest thing. In Joshua's day, the hills in Israel's heartland... So, so here where Shechem is at, yeah, this is going to be the land of Ephraim and Manasseh. It says in Joshua's day, the hills in Israel's heartland were called the Wood Country because of the forests. It was thick. If you remember in Second Samuel eighteen, Absalom was killed in the forest because he was driving his donkey through there, and he got his his head caught in a branch. His hair. It actually says his head. I looked it up. All right, Second okay. Samuel eighteen. I didn't doubt you. No, no, no. It's a good thing. Second Samuel eighteen something, uh, verse six. So the, pe- the, the, the that was the wood of yeah six and then uh, eight nine nine. And Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule. The mule went under a thick boughs of a great oak, and his head got caught hold of the oak and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth and the mule that was under him went away so he basically is riding on his donkey he comes into a v-shaped branch the donkey keeps going and for some reason he's like hanging there unless there might be another part that says hair i don't care that the what we're focused on is the oak trees i love oak trees by the way now watch this i love oak trees in david's day there was a grove of mulberry trees in the valley of rephaim which was a couple of miles to the southwest of jerusalem remember how i just did the word baca Mm. you cover your eyes and you weep weep baca is means wept yes the word for mulberry is baca they're the weeping trees because they weep uh uh sap and things okay i thought that was cool huh um, and then we've got uh, the Gibeonites were made hewers of wood. Yeah, there was a lot of wood cutting down. Uh, there was a forest east of east of Bethel and Bethaven. Yeah. There was a forest in the wilderness of Ziph, southeast of Hebron. Yes. There was a forest in Harath, which was south of Ziph, toward the southern end of the Dead Sea. In Elisha's day, the prophets cut beams from a forest at Jordan, remember, to make that altar thing. They cut down the wood, they brought it out. Car- Mount Carmel was forested. Yeah. Uh, in Solomon's day, sycamore mm-hmm. trees were abundant. In Jotham's days, there were forests Sycamore in trees are those great big ones that look like they have disease. At Bashan, <laughs> east of the Sea of Galilee, was famous for its oak trees, which were used to make oars for the ships of Phoenicia. Hermon was famous for fir trees, which were also used for Phoenician uh, you get the idea. Something we just don't picture, and you got to completely unboggle your head to get there. And then they went through a couple of really bad famines. Remember where it didn't rain for three and a half years? That probably had a lot to do and with it. And they would cut them down, and they yeah. wouldn't practice reforestation, yeah. and, uh, and and they lost it. They, they lost, lost it. it. Um, 
So anyway, so he spends some time there because he built a house. He's got some play, and he's he's surrounded by plenty. There's the the brook is right there, the brook Jabbok River, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is like thirty foot wide brook. He's got water. He's got trees. He's got fish. He's yeah. He's got his kids, his family. Big old field. Yeah, I bet you know what it would have looked like. It, it would have looked like the those wagon train guys. They come up over the hill right and they're out. coming into the perfect valley. Right out. We're going to name it Bonanza Sukoff. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right. So, and you'll notice that now there's a new paragraph marker. There is. Verse 18. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padanaram, and he pitched his tent before the city, which just means east of the city. So we've got two options. Oh, first off, the word Shalem means peace or perfect. It's very close to like Salem. Yes, it is. The uh, here's a map. This is option number one. Um, he comes down from Succoth. He comes into to east of Shechem to Shalem. And Jacob settles here. Um, in Shalem, all right. The rabbis, which often get things wrong, equate Shalem and Salem because it just sounds good. Because it sounds the same, and they means peace. But you know what? There's four different suck-offs mentioned in the Bible. So what are you going to do with that? Uh, there's a couple of different Bethels that we learned. Mm-hmm. So this is option Lust. number one. Right. This is option number one. He comes to Shekel. And then in the next... Shekel. I'm sorry. Shechem. <laughs> I can't read backwards. He comes to Shechem and he goes down into Bethel <clears throat> in verse... In chapter 35, God says, arise and go to Bethel. And then he goes to Jerusalem, maybe Luz, and then he goes to Bethlehem, which is where Rachel's going to die. But, as we learned in Joshua 16, back when we were studying chapter 28, this might be Bethel, but this is also Bethel. This is Mount Bethel, and Mount Bethel is not Luz, which this one is. So therefore, there are two Bethels, and he does not do option number one. Instead, <laughs> I'm just pointing it out because that's what the commentators all say. Okay, don't read the commentators because they're commentators. They're commentators. Instead, he leaves suck off, comes down to Shechem again. Shechem. Shechem. He's east of Shechem in a place called Shalem. We just don't know where it is. It's east of Sh- it's east of Shechem. It's part of Shechem. <clears throat> yeah. He drives right on past Mount Bethel, which did exist. And in verse, in chapter 35, when he says, Arise, go to Bethel, he comes down here to Bethel, which is Luz, which is where he had the vision with God, mm-hmm. which is Jerusalem, mm-hmm. which is where Melchizedek was. And later he goes on to Bethlehem, which is uh, Ephrata, which is where uh, Rachel dies. Shalem. They just give everything multiple names. Yeah, Shalem it's is like, not Salem. Shalem. It's like if I was to say, you know what, I'm going to leave Akron and go to the rubber city. Right. So confusing. You know, well, where's the rubber city? I don't know. It's supposed to be near Akron, though, because they went to the rubber city. So God, God wants us to study. All right, now I will point out something that's cool here. He has to cross the Jordan River. Yeah. To get to Shechem. Yeah. When Abraham first came... Way back in chapter 12. Mm. When Abraham first came into the promised land, it says, And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sychem, unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was in the land, and the Lord appeared unto Abram. First time that God appears to Abram is in Shechem. Shechem, of course, we talked about before, is between Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, the mountain of blessing and the mountain of cursing. Mm -hmm. It's also where Jacob's well is at. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a lot earlier and whatever. All right. Where was I? Eight o'clock. I know. We're finishing up. (laughs) So he's there, and he's east of Shechem, and he decides he's going to buy some ground. He says he bought a parcel of field where he had spread his tent. He's he's been living there a while. He says, hey, I wonder if this belongs to anybody. I better buy it from him. (laughs) Yes, quite different than the way we are. Can you imagine driving your herds from Youngstown to Akron and your... regulations and people it's not like he couldn't that. even make it happen he couldn't even make it happen but back then there was nothing so anyway so he buys it he buys this parcel uh, at the hand of the children of Hamor Shechem's father for a hundred pieces of money what did I say about money it's silver yeah it's only silver it's silver matter of fact I'll tell you this it's current money 
currency. In the book of Joshua 24:32, Joshua 24:32, right at the end of Joshua, it says, um, "And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem." in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of silver. silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Uh, the only thing I wanted to point out was back in um, Genesis 28, Abraham had bought a plot of land from the sons, the Hittite, yes. the sons of Ephron, the Hittite, yep. uh, for 400 pieces of silver. And so here's what we had back there. This was in Mamre for 400 shekels of silver. Abraham bought it from the children of Heth, specifically Ephron. And Abraham was buried there in Sarah. Isaac was buried, is going to be buried there in the next chapter or two. <laughs> Rebecca's buried there. Uh, Jacob buries Leah there. And eventually Jacob himself is buried there. Jacob now buys some land east of Shechem for a hundred pieces of silver from the children of Hamar, uh, Shechem's father, and this is where Joseph's bones are going to go. So, so this is the end of it. They brought him all the way up to northern Israel, right smack dab in kind of the heart of Israel, middle Israel. Yeah, because Sea of, Gal oh, that's right. sea of Galilee up is up here. Right, right. So so Joseph gets buried right smack right in, in the, the heart middle. of it. That's right cool. Of it. That's neat. All right. And he erected there an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. <laughs> the word El is mighty one. And Elohe, which is a form of uh, Elohim, just it means God. You can see the word for, for mighty is, is hidden inside of it. Yes. It me, means power powerful one. Um, El is, I love this, you've got our ox, our strong ox head and our staff. So it has the idea of a strong staff, a shepherd staff, mighty one. But in Isaiah 9.14, I know we're done, but doggone it, this stuff is so good. Oh my, let's start real. Isaiah 9.14. Just hit pause and come back later. That's yeah, just hit pause and come back later. We, we binge watch all of these. Uh, we do them and then watch them. Is that what I want? Nine. Oh, it was nine four, not nine fourteen. Nine four. It says, "For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor." So, so the yoke was actually an ox staff, and it was a reference to authority as well as the idea of a shepherd's staff being involved. So when it's mighty. It's not just mighty in strength, it's mighty in authority. Yeah. So this is the mighty, and then this word is God, but you can see that the word God also has the word might or power in it. Uh, Elohe is, there's your staff and your strong ox head with the, the idea of a joining, and then hey, all right. So this actually, Elohe is the power of a ruler or a teacher. Think about God with the power of a ruler or a teacher. You know what I went right to? How God has given us what? Pastors and teachers. Mm -hmm. Pastor And God himself is a pastor teacher. He's the ruler teacher. Mm -hmm. So when he names it the El Elohe Israel, he's, the, the commentators and everything, they shorten it and they go, it's the mighty God of Israel. But the word God has so much in it as well because it's the, it's, it, there is power to make up the word God, and it's the power of a ruler. So this is the mighty, powerful, teaching God of Israel. And, of course, he has to build another altar because that's what he does. And, uh, and, and I think we can call it done. Okay. Isn't that really cool? Good chapter. Keep it simple. Prodigal brothers. Prodigal brothers. Uh, if you need to forgive somebody, go forgive them. If you need to wrestle with God before you do it, go do that. If you need to trust God for your supply and realize that God is your everything, even if you have nothing, you can do that. I wonder what 
went through Esau's. This is okay. This is so Esau leaves, right? And he leaves him back there. He's like, all right, fine. Come on, guys, get my 400 people together. We're going back to Seir. And they get over the first hill, and he looks at his buddies and he goes, he gave me a whole bunch of grizzled ring strike stuff. What am I supposed to do with this mess? <laughs> That's a fantastic view. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, he's never going to join us. No, no. He gave us all, what am I supposed to do with all this? I got white sheep. I know, everybody wants white sheep. Who wants the grizzled things? You can't make clothes out of it. Come like, on. Keep those Back. things separate. Yeah. Yay. Let's pray. All right, go ahead. Lord God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for this chapter and another chapter of reconciliation through grace. Seems like uh, anytime people get back together and amend their um, relationships, that somebody has to extend grace and somebody has to surrender, mm -hmm. um, usually on both sides. And uh, we thank you, God, for this example. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And in case you guys are wondering, they do get together at the funeral. Oh Isaac yeah, that's yeah, coming yeah, up. Yeah, so, yeah. so and they probably had parties and yeah, so they they do touch. They got base. together for Christmas or whatever. But uh, that's it. Thank you. Bye.